Any company that is not moving towards better representation on their boards is going to find themselves behind the eight ball. And that if organizations could think about these challenges, not as heavy weights on their shoulders of something that they have to do, but instead exciting opportunities to think about how they can innovate, I'm Sarah Kaplan. I am Distinguished Professor of Gender in the Economy and a Professor of Strategic Management at the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto. And I am Founding Director of the Institute for Gender in the Economy. There's been a lot of conversation in the United States, in Canada, and globally around increasing the diversity in organizations, and in particular on corporate boards of directors. And so one of the things I've been interested in is understanding, well, how could we help move the needle on that? What are the systems, procedures, policies, regulations, and laws that might actually help increase diversity? Many CEOs, many leaders really do want to take action, but they don't, they don't exactly know where to start. And in part, that's because these problems are super complex. There's many different trade-offs, there's many different demands. So they might say, oh, well, we want more diversity on the team, but actually to do that, we're gonna to have to search harder. We're gonna to have to invest more in recruiting. We're gonna to have to invest more in team building. So that feels like really expensive to do, therefore I'm not gonna do it. That's a trade-off. And what I try to advocate around gender diversity specifically, but also other forms of social responsibility and environmental issues, is that these are really innovation opportunities. And that if organizations could think about these challenges, not as heavy weights on their shoulders of something that they have to do, but instead exciting opportunities to think about how they can innovate. One example that I give is an organization called McCarthy Uniforms. A uh, small company in Canada that sells uniforms to schools and also for construction and other things like that. And the new CEO comes in for a turnaround. The company's been kind of run into the ground by the prior folks. And so she analyzed everything about how they went to market and their products, thinking through what does this mean from a gender lens. And she discovered a number of things that are really important. So for school uniforms, they were always sold with the hems undone because they figured the mother somehow at home was gonna hem the pants uh, or the skirt for their child, depending upon how tall that child was. Well, one of the things she discovered was no one has time for that anymore. So they innovated by creating a hem tape that would allow uh, families to quickly uh, fix the clothes for the kids. And that led her to win many more contracts with schools because the product was just gonna be easier to use for the customer. What does this gender-based analysis do? The company is supposed to take four years to do the turnaround. She does it in two years because she has applied this lens in ways that allow her to innovate in the product and service offerings, how she goes to market. So that's one example where you use the challenge and you don't say diversity is one thing and my product and go-to-market strategy is another. You bring them together and suddenly you have a more powerful company that does much better financially than could have been anticipated.